some new terminology for you. So when we talk about arithmetic means, we're talking about numbers placed in between two non-consecutive terms, um, and these are called arithmetic means. So terms placed between two non-consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence are called ar arithmetic means. For example, if we talk about 5, 10, 15, 20, the numbers 10 and 15 are arithmetic means between 5 and 20. In order to determine the means between two given terms, it's helpful to think of the two given terms as the first and last terms of the sequence. So what we're going to do is take a look at class example 6, negative 4 and 8. We need three arithmetic means. So if we write down negative 4 here, that's our first term. And if there's three middle numbers here, 1, 2, 3, three arithmetic means between, then we have 8. We could almost think of this as a new sequence here where we have this first term and then second term, third term, fourth term, and fifth term. We can think of the negative 4 as the first term and 8 as the last term. So that means that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms here. So we can call this a T5. This is our T1. So if we take a look then at the difference, how does this work? With an arithmetic sequence, then we're going to be adding a d here, and then adding a d here, and then adding a d here, and then adding a d here. So if we think about it, this negative 4 is going to be adding 4 common differences, which we don't know what it is, to become the number 8. So now we have a, an equation here with one unknown variable. So if we add 4 here, add 4, we get 4d should be equal to 12, and d equals 3. If the common difference equals 3, then maybe we can add 3 here and see if we get the number 8. So adding 3 would be negative 1. Adding 3 would be positive 4. Oh, this is positive 2, sorry. Adding 3 would be positive 2. Then adding 3 more would be 5. And adding 3 more gets us our 8. So it seems that we found these arithmetic means. The means here are negative 1, 2, and 5. Can things look a little bit more complicated when we have talking about uh, arithmetic sequences? Of course they can. If we have this sequence here, and we can assume perhaps, oh, it says right here, it forms an arithmetic sequence. So if it forms an arithmetic sequence, there's certain attributes that an arithmetic sequence has. One is that it has a common difference. So if we can find D here, and we know that it has to be a common difference between the terms. So perhaps using that information can help us solve for the value of X such that this x plus 2, 3x minus 1, and 2x plus 1 form an arithmetic sequence. So remember that the common difference is between any two successive terms. So we have t2 minus t1 has to equal d, and t3 minus t2 also has to equal the same d. So let's plug in their expression for t2 and our expression for t1 so that we have 3x minus 1 minus our x plus 2 is equal to, well, it has to equal the same thing. Since both of these are equal to the common difference, they should be equal to each other. So we have 2x plus 1, the third term, minus the second one. It will be very important here to put this in brackets so that you can use the distributive property correctly. Let's simplify. We have 3x minus 1 minus x minus 2. On the right side, we have 2x plus 1 minus 3x, and this minus of a negative 1 is positive 1. Continuing to simplify, we have 3x minus x is 2x minus 3. This is negative 1 and negative 2 make negative 3. And 2x and negative 3x, this is negative x plus 2. 
and bringing the x's to one side. So we'll add x here and add x here. We have 3x minus 3 is equal to 2. And continuing on, we could say that 3x then, 3x is equal to, adding 3 to both sides is 5. So x is equal to 5 over 3. So let's determine the numerical value of these three terms. We have the first term is x plus 2, so 5 over 3 plus 2. Well, if we think of this 2 as 6 over 3, then we can think of this as 11 over 3 for term 1. For term 2, we can say 3x minus 1, and if x was 5 over 3, we have 3 times 5 over 3 minus 1. These 3's cancel, or you can think of 15 over 3, that's 5 minus 1, this is the number 4. And finally, term 3 is 2x plus 1, so 2x plus 1, so it's 2 times this 5 over 3 plus 1, and 2 times 5 is 10, so we have 10 over 3 plus 1, we could think of this 1 as 3 over 3, so this term 3 would end up being 10 over 3 plus 3 over 3. This would be 10 plus 3, 13 over 3. Okay, so let's talk about the next two class examples. They're doing the same question, but in two different ways. So let's take a look at the first way, class example number 8. We have the third and eighth terms of an arithmetic sequence are 12 and negative 18 respectively. Let's use arithmetic means to determine the fifth term of the sequence. So let's use a strategy here. We'll, we'll say this is the third term. So there's a first term right here, a second term. The third term is 12. Then we have 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So the eighth term here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, is negative 18. So let's use arithmetic means to determine the fifth term of the sequence. So we have t1, this is t3, sorry, this is t4, or t4, this is t5. So this is the one we're looking for. But what I'd like to do is consider, ignore the first two right now, and consider just looking at this sequence or part of a sequence and thinking of that as a sequence on its own. And we can not We can do that. We can rename this term one of our new sequence and name this negative 18 as one, two, three, four. Oh, you know what, I have to fix this because if we count this again, one, two, three, four, five, this is not T5, this is T6. So let's backtrack. This is a six here. And so that means that this is a 5. If we consider this 12 as t1, then this negative 18 is now t6. We see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then when we take a look at our tn equals t1 plus n minus 1d, then we can see that tn is known, is negative 18. This is a t6, so the n is the value of 6. And knowing Tn and T1, we can see that D is the only one in this equation that we don't know, and now we solve. So negative 18 is equal to 12 plus 6 minus 1 is 5, and that's times D. And negative 18 minus 12 is negative 30, and we have 5D, and therefore we can safely say that D is equal to negative 6. With that being known, now we can use negative 6 as our D. So if we add a negative 6 here, this would be 6. And adding a negative 6 here, this term t5, our original t5, or in other words, here are t3, but our original t5, t5 is equal to 0. Let's state the first term. The first term of our original sequence, hmm, we don't know this term. But using our common difference, this here is a negative 6. 
So that means that this number here has to be, when we subtract 6, we're going to get 12. So this is going to be 18. And then, going backwards here, this cum difference is negative 6. Something minus plus a negative 6 is going to be 18. So this is going to be 24. So let's state the first term then. The original term here, T1 or A, is 24. And the common difference, D, is equal to negative 6. Well, let's complete the following. Here in C, we have T8 minus T3. So the original one, T8, is negative 18. So we have negative 18 minus 12. And then on the bottom, we have 8 minus 3. That's 5. Now let's see what this is. So at negative 18 minus 12, that's negative 30 divided by 5. That's equal to negative 6. How curious. This, this thing here seems to be the same value as the common difference. Well, let's write T3 and T8 in terms of A and D so that we can prove that this is equal to D. Hmm. Well, T8. We can say this, this is T8 is equal to, using this format of Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1D. And we say T8 is equal to A plus 8 minus 1D. We'll take T3. T3 is equal to A plus 3 minus 1D. You can see that now. T3 is equal to A plus 3 minus 1D. And let's plug this in here. So T8 will be this whole thing. A plus 8 minus, well, let's just say that's 7D then, because 8 minus 1 is 7. And then that subtracting, I'll put this in brackets, A plus 2D. And that's going to be, have 8 minus 3 on the bottom here because I'm following the pattern of this left side. So when we continue this, this a plus 7d is going to be subtracting a and subtracting this 2d. And this 8 minus 3 we can just say is 5. Well, when we continue this, we have a minus a, that's 0, but 7d minus 2d is 5d, and that's divided by 5. These 5s will cancel then, and we're left with d, and that equals the right side. So we've shown then that this t8 minus t3 over 8 minus 3 equals d in this particular scenario. Well, can we suggest a formula for finding the common difference of a sequence if we're given the value of the pth term and the qth term? Well, considering this 8 to be, if we say 8 is equal to our p, and 3 is equal to our q, this 3 because we were talking about the third term, right? So let's suggest this formula that tp minus tq over, and remember the 8 is p, p minus q is equal to d. Can we suggest this formula? Can we, this would work out for us. Well, we, we've just shown that we could find the common difference using this, this tp minus tq over p minus q, and that equals d. Well, let's use it and try to find it with a system of equations. We've, we've learned system of equations in previous courses. So let's set up equation number one. So equation number one, we could say, well, using the first definition of using this term here. So our general term is going to be Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1D. But if we think about it, it says that in the question, the third term is 12. So we could say that N is equal to 3. So we have term number 3 is equal to the first term plus 3 minus 1D. That's our first equation. And if we simplify it, it would be T3 is equal to A plus 2D. All right? And T3, we're, we're told that it's equal to 12. So 12 is equal to A plus 2D. 
Now, if we look at the second equation, we consider a second equation using the fact that negative 18 is the eighth term. So again, this general formula of tn is equal to the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. And t number 8 is the first term plus 8 minus 1 in brackets times d. So that's t8 is equal to a plus 7d. Now we know that t8 is equal to negative 18. So we have negative 18 is equal to a plus 7d. Now we have an equation with two variables here. And another equation with those same two variables with different coefficients, but the same two variables, the variable a and d. So we set them up here right on top of each other. So equation 1 and equation 2. We have 12 is equal to a plus 2d. That's equation 1. And equation 2 here, negative 18 is equal to a plus 7d. In fact, to keep, keep it uh, parallel to the previous example, I'm going to put the negative 18 a equaling a plus 7d on the top. And we have 12 is equal to a plus 2d on the bottom. So equation 1, equation 2. Uh, so I'll just get rid of that. Here we have, how do we solve this system of equations? Well, here, if we could subtract equation 2 from 1, or in other words, 1 minus 2, then let's see, negative 18 minus this one, these a's would be eliminated. So by process of elimination, this these a's would be done with. We could find the d's and then go back and find the a's. So negative 18 minus 12, this is negative 30. a minus a is 0. And 7d minus 2d is 5d. Now we have an equation with just d in it. So this is negative 30 is equal to 5d, which means that d is equal to negative 6. Once we find this negative 6, then our a, we can use one of these equations. Let's use this one right here. We could say that 12 is equal to a plus 2 times negative 6. All right, so 12 is equal to a plus, plus negative 12. And when we add 12, we can see that a here is equal to 12 plus 12, which is 24. Now we're ready for our assignment, and I will see you in class.